So I'm leaving Creed to do the Elwood Pass and Great Divide alternates to get to the border of Colorado and New Mexico. And so I uh, have opportunities to uh, buy food, either snacks or actual dinner, and even stay indoors if it's raining tonight. And um, I think my problem may have been electrolytes. I um, was feeling really bad last night and dug around in my stuff and found my salt stick caps and took one. And in a few minutes, I started to feel better. I could breathe, I could relax, and then I fell asleep. And uh, in the middle of the night though, I, I woke up again to go to the bathroom and got a massive leg cramp, so now my leg is sore. But anyway, I think I got four and a half, five days to the end. I have 100, 100 miles. I wanna take that train that goes to Chama, so I don't know if I'll feel like, you know, trying to time it so I can do that, but if I can, that'd be really cool. If not, I'll just hitch there. And then I should be home in a week from today. <laughs> Yay! So a man pulled up in a truck and asked if I wanted a ride 10 miles down the road. And I thought about it for a second and I said, yes. <laughs> and so he dropped me off here at this really cool place with these beautiful cabins. And I just, he drove through, we drove through the coolest um, gorge, I think. It had like this thing called um, mail, oh, post, post office rock, where the Pony Express, one horse would ride up and they would drop the mail off in a cave under the rock. And then the other Pony Express would come up and pick it up, you know, kind of like a relay. <laughs> so that, that was really cool. So I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get to take pictures of the area. It was really cool. But I'm 10 miles ahead of my goal, making it for a much easier day. That's great. I don't care. I'm not a purist. <laughs> you got to see this. Really super pretty. He said that uh, yesterday a bolt of lightning struck some of these dead trees and uh, they rushed out, him and another guy rushed out to, with a shovel to put it out. And I may have, may have seen that bolt of lightning yesterday. Anyway, I'm not sure how many miles left, but maybe 10, 11, something like that. Oh, and the other cool thing is he dropped me off at this little lodge and uh, they offered me a cup of coffee, but uh, I've already had too much coffee. And they told me that they met Lucy, the lady who said she was hiking to uh, Alaska <laughs> and this is like such a small world because I met her in the middle of nowhere but anyway I thought that was cool I guess she's hiking Argentina to Alaska so she she definitely must be doing her own you know road walking and shortest possible distance to get anywhere so that is the Rio Grande River wow Too bad I don't have a boat. <laughs> hey look, there's mountain mahogany, like we have at home. Is that a hops?
Well, I've got th about three miles to go to get to South Fork. I'm kind of thirsty. I still have a little bit of water, but I'm looking forward to getting something to drink there. There's really not much here. Just a lot of RV parks. There's a liquor store coming up. I'll check that out. Rainbow Grocery. That's where I'm gonna go. Actually, I think there's stuff that way and that's the way I have to go anyway. So I'm gonna skip the rainbow for now. Some drink mixes at Dollar General. So I think there's a Mexican restaurant down there. Maybe I can get a burrito for dinner tonight. Carry it with me. Maybe I should just eat the burrito or whatever now. And then if I get hungry later, nibble on some snacks or something. Check it out. Surprisingly plain, but very good. Just a, a big piece of chicken, barbecue chicken, and beans and rice and guacamole and pico de gallo, but I hit the spot. So I don't think I have enough time to get where I wanted to go unless somebody offers me a ride. <laughs> At long last, I'm leaving this busy highway. <sighs> well, for as stressful as it was to hike on the highway for so long, it is nice to be down in here. This dirt road is very pleasant. It feels like summer still. It doesn't feel like fall or winter. So I'm happy to be down here. I'm happy to be so close to being done. I should find a campsite in about a mile and a half or so. It may have people in it though. It's described as being very large. <laughs> so we'll see. I may have to go further. Lots of people are camped everywhere along the river so the trick is to find a nice small one that uh, you can kind of hide away in so the road is is going to go away from the river it's just not going to be quite as nice i should get some water here well i still can i don't know if any of these side creeks well, there's the huge one listed in Far Out, and it's got people in it, and it's not really the kind of campsite out in the open. I don't really like that kind. I got three liters of water, and up I go. gonna look in those trees over there. Well there's a lot of cow poop under every tree and not very flat, very lumpy. So we'll go look across the street here, see how these trees look. Nope, no good. No dry spot, no flat spot. I'll just keep walking forever. <laughs> I have to be really careful when I get out to go pee because <laughs> it's just straight down. So I got 13 miles to Elwood Pass and then I think 21 miles total from where I camped. Uh, 21 and a half or something. 
to a low, low point before it starts climbing. The low point is around 10,000 something, 10,500. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a high altitude day today. Hopefully it goes okay. It's raining. <laughs> We walked right past the junction that goes up to the pass that gets you back on the CET, but that's okay because I am not going back to the CET to hike along 12,000 foot ridge lines all day long, one after the other. I am now on the Great Divide al alternate headed towards Platoro, which I probably won't get to today. I think it's a day away from here. So I guess I get to go down now, yay! Oh, and by the way, I got 13 miles before noon, so that's pretty good. Well, sadly, it's still going uphill. And Looks like it will for a while. down here now at 10,000 feet. My headache is gone. I feel really sleepy because it feels like summer. It's The ground is all hot. I mean, it's all white and kind of blinding and the sun is all hot and I just want to take a nap. <laughs> but I don't know, I may be able to make it to Platoro today. 
we'll see. Usually the last few miles take forever, so I may have to skip doing any kind of visiting of Platoro and just power through it. But uh, making pretty good time. So I'm climbing up over this mountain, getting up to 10,700 or so. And I'm pretty close to the Gold Pan Cabins and RV Park. And it's sister open at 8 a.m. So, and that they have a breakfast. So I could stop short of it if I don't make it. If I do make it, I'll make it. But I could stop short and then try to get there for breakfast. Oh, I think I made it to the top. Well, I made it to Platoro. I had three miles to go and a couple stopped and offered me a ride. And I decided that if somebody offers me a ride, I'm taking it. But uh, I'm not gonna ask for a ride. So 25 miles hike today. I got a place to stay. I got a late start because uh, there's all these dark curtains. Um, <laughs> here's these bunk beds, man, I almost fell out of it because the mattresses slip, slip around. But anyway, so it's almost seven and I ate breakfast out of my food bag because my food bag is too heavy. So I'm gonna skip any kind of breakfast here. Whoops, maybe I should close the door. So I have 22.4 uh, miles plus whatever it takes to get back on the trail to get to the Red Bear house where I can probably get another room and stay out of the rain. And it's all downhill, I believe. So this one over here, they have a cafe and a store, and I think that's the red truck of the people who gave me a ride. That one looks a lot more luxurious. The gold pan was kind of, maybe because they gave me the hiker accommodation, but kind of run down. But all I cared about really was getting out of the rain. Man, it rains so hard. Everything's really wet now. So hopefully, I'll have another day where it doesn't rain that much during the day and I can get to that other uh, cabin place and stay there and stay out of the rain. I have about, I think it's 41 miles to finish this hike, so I'm getting really close. So this is the Conejos River that I'm going to be following all day long and that the amount of blue sky is very encouraging. That red truck up there, those are the people that gave me a ride yesterday. They asked if I was okay, if I got a good rest. And I did, I got a pretty good rest. 
I woke up a lot with, I just couldn't get my headache to go away. And uh, I got hot sleeping indoors. <laughs> but uh, I'm on my way. I have like maybe 16 miles to go to get to Red Bear House. So that's pretty good progress. Pouring once again. It's pouring and it's sunny. Well, I just got offered a ride and I turned it down because I'm really pretty sure I can get to that Red Bear house tonight. Tomorrow, though, I ain't turning down any rides, that's for sure. I may even stick my thumb out because I'll be walking on a paved highway. Who knows how awful that's going to be. Well, I just sat down to have a drink and maybe eat some lunch, but uh, here comes the rain. So I better get my poncho back on and just get going. So last night in the middle of the night, I did some research on the internet, trying to figure out why I have such a hard time with this altitude. And one thing I read were some studies, well, I didn't read the whole studies, but there are some studies out there that say that, um, at altitude, for some people anyway, who are exercising, uh, the altitude messes up your the hormones that regulate sodium in the body, and the result is hyponatremia. And um, there were some other things that said that you know a lot of people tell you that because it's well there were some page, web pages that said because at altitude the air is drier you're breathing harder you're losing moisture you should drink more you lose your your uh, sense of thirst so you should drink more so I was doing that um, but drinking too much water also gives you hyponatremia and um, some web pages said that uh, really the best thing is to um, just drink to thirst and then to manage your headache um, with either going lower if you can or just take ibuprofen. Didn't have very much ibuprofen so I wasn't taking very much. But I think the mistake, big mistake I made was forcing myself to drink a lot of water. I don't normally drink very much water anyway. So I'm just going to go with my thirst from now on and recognize that hyponatremia is really bad. different pine trees now. So I think I'm going to get there pretty early, like maybe 3, 3.30. So I don't know if I should stay there or if I should stop and get a cold drink, fill up water bottles and then just keep going. I'm kind of torn <laughs> which to do. It might be nice to rest a little bit more than usual, but it might be nice to get closer to the end. <laughs> so I bet that's it over there. It's 3.30. I 
I think that's uh, where I turn, that brown sign. If I was smart, I would just turn here and go instead of making this little detour for, I don't know what, soda. <laughs> but that's what happens when you're out here. You start to want some little comforts. <laughs> So I decided to stay here tonight. I can sleep in this uh, dining room after everybody's gone. It's been, I don't know, windy, cold, alternating with rain and sun. And so uh, I have 19 miles to get to the border tomorrow. And uh, I think I can do that and be done before nightfall. <laughs> I got a nice early start, 6 a.m. I didn't sleep very well. The floor was hard and I just couldn't get comfortable and my feet were twitchy. I should have just grabbed a dinner and hiked on and found a nice spot. It didn't even rain. It rained like around dinner time, but after that there wasn't a cloud in the sky and there were so many stars. So I kind of blew it there, but I have about 13 miles to the top of the pass and then a six mile round trip to touch the border. There's the Conejos River that I walked down all day yesterday. And look how high I am already. So, yeah. I just did a big switch back. I think it's gonna level off a little bit and go over a minor pass and then It'll probably be eight more miles to the Cumbres Pass.
There's the CDT. The northbound CDT. So I'm going this way. to the station. That's the train that I didn't get to ride that I'm not going to get to ride, but at least I got to see it. <laughs> that looks really fun. Look at all those people in the back. <laughs> There it is, the end. So some particularly memorable days include the day that I did James Peak. I hiked through all that mossy tundra stuff. It was pretty exhausting. And then I climbed that 13,000 foot peak that was really scary. And then, the very next day, I climbed another 13,000 foot peak before I got to Burthood Pass. I forget the name of that peak. But that was a pretty memorable experience. And um, another one was climbing that big green mountain. I think it was the first high alpine mountain I climbed in Colorado. It was so beautiful. And then another one was climbing that Parkview Lookout where I met the uh, Brazilian guy and we had to try to talk in gestures to figure out which way to go, each of us. And, um, and then other particularly um, memorable was uh, Gray's Peak and the scary experience going down the other side. That was memorable in a bad way. I wish that I hadn't done it at all. I think if I had to do it over again, I would take an alternate route and avoid it. Oh, another good experience was the shortcut I took that had me follow a dirt road after Gray's Peak after Webster Pass, I think, had me follow a dirt road that went downhill the whole entire way along a beautiful stream and then met up with the Colorado Trail for the first time. And that cut off 10 miles of horrible ridge walks, which I don't see the appeal of those at all. That was a great day. <laughs> so those are some of the best days. I enjoyed meeting the northbounders along the highway in the Great Basin. I, and I loved my campsite in the Great Basin. It was nice, nice place, nice night. I unfortunately didn't take a picture of my favorite campsite of all, which was by the gate. I got a picture of the gate though. <laughs> that was my best night. It was such a flat site, so soft and comfortable, such a warm night, so quiet. That was the best campsite of them all. So 
Those are some of the memories. Of course, there's lots more. There were a lot of good days and some bad days. But overall, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad it's done. All right, stepping over the border. Whoa, into Colorado. Well, time to go back. Well, okay, I did it. I can't believe I did it. I finally finished something I set my mind to do. I'm not the most uh, perfect <laughs> through hiker there is, but I did it. I had to go low altitude to do it, but I did it and I feel pretty good about it. So uh, three miles back to the trailhead and then hitched to Chama. And there was a guy there at the uh, sign and he just finished hiking New Mexico. So it was both of us uh, celebrating. He did it as a series of day hikes over many years. <laughs> so kind of a coincidence. And um, anyway, he says there's a way to get to Al Albuquerque from Santa Fe. So maybe it's cheaper to go home from Albuquerque than from Santa Fe. I just didn't see any bus service or anything on the web page that I found. But I'll do some research and maybe I can get myself home without spending 500 bucks on a plane ticket. I gotta walk all along that ridge again. That looks really cool from this view. Way I quit my hike last night because rather than go out into potential rain or go out when it appeared that it wasn't going to rain, I was tired of the whole experience. So I stayed indoors last night and also the last three nights I ate my dinner at restaurants <laughs> instead of out of my food bag in a way that was a sort of quitting the trail too but my feet my feet kept going <laughs> so my feet did the hiking but my mind was was done with it <laughs> but um <coughs> it feels good to have touched the border now if i do uh New Mexico as a separate through hike. I'll have to do with this again, but that's okay. It's pretty pleasant here. Oh, and so it was July 18th to August 25th. I had three zero days. One was in an encampment waiting for mail. One was in Grand Lake and one was in Creed. So otherwise I put in sometimes a low mileage day to get to town like less than 10 miles and then usually a moderate mileage day to leave town somewhere around 15 to 18. So I think I was pretty determined. I hiked in a determined fashion. I wasn't uh, a slouch. I think my highest mileage day was the day I walked to Platoro 
My, my feet actually put in 25 miles, um, but with the ride I got from the nice couple, it was 28 miles, but 25 miles hiked, it is more miles than I hiked any other day. So I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Not bad for an old lady, I'm 59 and a half, still going. I already feel sad that I'm not going to be living among the wildflowers anymore. It's probably the best part of doing these kind of things, these trails, just seeing all the flowers. I know most people are more into the physical prowess, but the flowers are what make me happy. Well, that's it for the CDT for 2024. Now we return to civilized life.